uh, how can we put this into action, what you just uh, gave us? Well, let me tell one other story that happened today, and I'll segue into it. This all fits beautifully, believe me. I spoke to another person who called me today. Um, the man was um, 60 years old. He said, Claude, I'm a real estate agent. I'm an investor, and I have this unbelievable fear of picking up the phone. That's me. Uh, who's that? That isn't you. Who is that? Audrey. Audrey, you don't have any fear of the phone. You ma you're the master of the phone. <laughs> Absolutely. And your your microphone's clicking a lot. Um, the thing is, we have to overcome that fear. Why do we have that fear? We have that fear because we're uncomfortable, because we're not in control. We don't know what questions to ask. And when we get on the phone with a stranger, all that little child inside of us just comes out and we, um, we just freeze up. And I'm guilty of that. Believe me, I'm the former world's worst sales guy. And you have to master to overcome this fear. How do we do it? By learning a system of qualification. We set up the agenda that we talked about last week. That kind of gives you this. We have only three simple steps in guts. Agenda, qualification, close. The agenda kind of let sets us up. We talked about this last time. We talked about how the agenda sets us up so we can hopefully gain sound different, gain some trust and some likability, and, and, and ask permission for questions. Set up a role play. Someone's someone's got their hair spray bottle going in the background. Yeah, uh, I think it's coming from Raphael's phone. You, you can like you have the control to mute. Okay. Uh, to mute him. Yeah. Okay. There we go. He must have been. Shh. Some, or it sounded like a garage where they're doing the tires yeah. or something like that. And the agenda gives us a, an outline in our head, a system, a method. So we know, hey, Mr. Prospect, I'm, I'm interested in your property or helping you get in a property or invest in property. Can I ask you a few questions? You ask me some questions. Maybe we can figure out how to solve this problem. And at the end of this conversation, you fire me or I'll fire you if we, if we don't think there's anything here for us to do. We don't have to say we'll think about it or get back to each other. We don't, we can be honest. Is that all right with you, sir? Boom. That's the agenda step. When we worked on that last, everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Then we got to go into the qualification. And uh -huh. this is, uh, the qualification is the essence. It's the core of using the psychology of persuasion. The, um, it is learning how to ask questions, but not like you're cross examining anybody or, you know, did you ever get someone who's asking you too many questions and you become totally subservient to this person, 40, 50, 60 minutes go by, and then they'll say, I'll think about it, I'll get back to you. That's called free consulting. You don't do that. Why are we in business, ladies and gentlemen? Make make money money. Money. To make money. Today, today, there is no tomorrow. The meteor is good. The meteor is going to hit tomorrow. Trump's going to become president. He is the president. Um, um, I'm joking, I don't do politics. Uh, things like this, there's only today, so you gotta be able to get on that phone, ask the questions uh, that way. What are, the what are the parts, I'm gonna turn this around, you guys have been studying, what are the key elements of qualification that we need to find out from any prospect? Motivation is one. Motivation, well, motivation I call it needs and greets, very good. Needs, needs and greets. Ability. What? Ability. Can you do this deal? Okay. Well, you know, decision making. Decision making. Whatever, let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's call that the decision making or do they have the authority to make a decision? Audrey, if you and I do a deal today, uh, do you have to speak to a significant other, a spouse or a pet rock in order to uh, consummate this deal or can you make this unilaterally with me today? You know, Claude, I want to, but I have to check with my SO. I don't know if I can, do, you know, I just, uh, you know. What, what is an SO is, is California talk for significant other. <laughs> Which in California can be very confusing, by the way. We're not getting into that. <laughs> anyway, so that's another one. The decision maker and the needs and greeds, or as Yasin even said better, the motivation. Do they have a need, a problem? something urgent that we have to find out what is their level of motivation and give them a score are they have the authority what else is important when we're qualifying ron somebody else phil commitment character 
Character. I like ca character is good. Do they have the character to keep a commitment? I like that. That's a biggie in, in my world. Hey, uh, uh, Phil, if you and I can do the deal and we can agree on the price and terms and you feel comfortable, as comfortable with me as I feel with you to right now, um, you strike me as a man when you give your word, I can cash that check at any bank. Is that, why do I feel that way, Phil? Uh, I'm a man of my word. Boom. That's the last nail in the coffin. If he gives you a commitment and he says something like that, there's very little chance of him. Um, uh, what's the word we call? Um, backing, backing out. So I, I guess that's the right. principle of commitment and consistency that you, you taught us, that Robert Cialdini, right? Commitment and consistency. You're getting a commitment. Yeah. The deal I did when I was running, I mean, it was a honeymoon. Everybody was happy. The guy was happy. We're going to do the deal. We worked out the money, the numbers, the payment, everything. What's the worst thing you can do when you're on the honeymoon and it's a kumbaya and you're making s'mores and there's a campfire and you're getting, and you're just about to get off the phone. What's the worst thing you could do? Get off the phone without getting a, a hey. final commitment. Like I just did with Phil. Because if you leave that open-ended, what is going to happen possibly can happen the next day and get your heart broken? His feet will get cold. Yeah. Has anyone here ever had the phone call when they called you back and they said, oh, Claude, I'm so sorry. Uh, we thought about it. And, uh, we're not ready, but you're a great guy. And we'll, maybe in six months we'll do it. You, whose fault is that? Your own. Totally our fault. Right. There are no, here's the, and forgive my bad language, but we're all adults here. There are no bad prospects. There's only shitty salespeople. You've got to do the guts moves. You've got to close the door. You've got to, you've got to say these things, even when you've got the devil and angel on your shoulder who says, Claude, don't say it. They may not like it or say it. Your Uncle Claude says, say it. Go for it. That's the difference between what I'm teaching you guys and what the other 99% of losers who are scared to make phone calls or, 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 or to take a authoritative role in sales. It's okay to be the authority figure, the leader, the doctor in sales. You guys are the saviors of real estate. The doc, you're the ones who have the solutions, the investors, the realtors, for people who have problems in this wonderful business. You have to take that authoritative role. Don't be scared to say the things that need to be said. Otherwise, you'll live to regret them the next day. I know because I've made all the mistakes, guys. It's, it's always, in the end, it's always my fault if the deal, usually, unless I'm dealing with a pathological liar or something like that. We have those two. Okay, we got needs and greeds. We got decision. We've got character. I'm missing two big things here. Help me out. Ron, what's missing? I'm no, hearing crickets. Motivation. No, we got motivation. Yeah, I know. We got motivation. We've got decision making. We got character. What are two really important things we need to know when we're qualifying a prospect in real estate? Time frame. Oh, thank you, James. Was that Mr. Castro? <laughs> it's one second today. I think, I think that was James, and he said time frame. Why is time frame important, James? <clears throat> James, fix that microphone or throw out that Dell computer. <laughs> Alberta, why is time what? important? Oh, my goodness. Let me think. Why is time important? How long? I know you're going to live to 120 years old, but what about the rest I of I am. Good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not Why sure. Why is time important? Why is Uber successful? Why is Blockbuster Video out of business? Why do taxi cabs suck? I guess strike when the iron is hot, so to speak. Yes. Time well, frame, you know. Time frame. Well, in, in real estate, if we were role playing Alberta, and I said to Alberta, um, I'm ready to, uh, are you comfortable? Uh, are we re when do you want to move out of your house? When do you want to sell your house? Uh, are you ready? Do you have the funds available to invest in this property today if you and I have a meeting of the minds? What's your time frame, Alberta, to sell your home? Okay, commitment, I guess. Well, it's commitment. also commitment, but it's also the time. Have we ever spoken to somebody on the phone and they say, well, I'm real interested in doing a deal and everything. And then you find out, well, we can't do it until uh, September uh, 2028. 
Right. I mean, they're not the only ones you're talking to. So you got to know, do you want to do a deal today in one year? Because I can get back to you in one year, but I need to do a, I need to make money today, <laughs> not in one year. So when we, my, 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 my only analogy for time frame is you go on a date, the best date of your life. You laugh, you have a good dinner, you go to the doorstep. Do you kiss or do you say, well, I'll come back in two weeks for that kiss? What do you do? <laughs> you go for the moment. You go for now. You qualify for time. Always talk about time. And the final one, and somebody better get this or I'm, I'm leaving. What Money. is the most important? Money. Money. Oh, oh, amen. Money. When should we talk about money? First. Now. Now. Now, today, in up front, should we, how, when do most salespeople in real estate talk about money? Beginning, middle, or end? End. Why? They're afraid to, to get rejected. Yeah. You both said the same thing, I think. You're, we're, we're scared that we got them on the phone and we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to upset them. God forbid we talk about the money, right? And so we wait till the very end. And so we take them out for dinner. We drive them around for two hours. We, we buy them lattes. And then we say, gee, Audrey, yeah, this was great. And when do you want to move in this house? Oh, Claude, I'd love to. And this is great. And thank you for the dinner and the wine and the lattes and driving me around. But I don't have any money. Whose fault is that? Uh, Our. How should we Our talk? Fault. We should always. Alberta, you want to say something to that? Um, no. <laughs> okay, that's good. I saw your thing light up, so I thought I'd put you yeah, on the She said spot. hours. You okay. were full. You oh, don't qualify for money. That's, yeah. Yeah, we talk, we qualify for the money up front, always. Amen. Who you know, Claude, I, um, back in the day, I was a real estate person. Uh, I was a sales lady. And uh, I remember going to this house and um, everything was signed up. And, you know, in the end, the sellers didn't want to sell. And, you know, something we never hold, it, hold them to us. We just let them out of the contract. Yeah. I, it was a very stormy night. I remember I locked myself out of my house and I couldn't get oh, in. Yeah. I said, oh, my God. Because you're a nice All lady. that worked for nothing. You're a nice lady and you just want to help people and money isn't that important, right? Well, it certainly is at my age. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, thing, the thing about it is uh, we have to discuss the money right up front how do we do that because it's awkward to talk about money sometimes how do we do that not for me claude not for me anymore let me hear you go ahead guy i love you just showed me a house you bought me a latte let's talk about should we talk about money before you drive me around and buy me the latte or or two hours later right at the very beginning let me hear it oh, alberta I, my wife and i are so interested in buying a home maybe you can help us uh yeah sure claude i'll uh... Well, you know, I'll look for you, and um, uh, would you mind if we uh, talked about money? Oh, <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Money, uh, yeah, money makes the world go around. I guess we need, we, I guess we have to drum up some money or qualify for a mortgage or something like that, right? Yeah. So, um, how much money could you put up now? Oh, um, I'm, uh, um, I'm sure that's not a problem. Um, my uncle Harry, who I haven't spoken to in 10 years, told me three Christmases, uh, t told me a Christmas 10 years ago that he would help us buy a house. So all I got to do is give him a call. How much do we need? Well, I'd say about uh, 10000 Oh, I'm sure Uncle Harry, who I haven't spoken to in 10 years, will help us out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well... I'd really like to know if uh, if Uncle Harry uh, can can do that, Claude. Oh, he's a I'd great really uncle. Like to know that I, he's a great uncle. We send him a Chris uh, St. Patty's Day card every year. I mean, you know. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. That's all good, Claude. But uh, I'd really like to uh, know that you can get this money before I, you know, get into the deal. Oh, I'll is send that, him. An email. Is that I'll something send... that we could do? Oh yeah, I'm sure we'll take care. I'm I'm probably going to be able to take care of that in the in a, in a couple of days. Okay. Now, Claude, I'm going to need your help now. <laughs> okay. Who wants to take over? Alberta, you did a great job. Who wants to take over for her? What am I doing, by the way? What's the word? It's one of my favorite. I, I'm a, I love words. Stall is a good word. What's, what's a $10 word? Give me a $10 word that means stall. Delay. Delay. Obfuscation. 
Oh, what is it? Obfuscation. What? Don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> Office, O F I S C A T I O N, I think. Obfuscation, it might be O P H, not O F I. Um, 